Oh, hello. If you're like me, then you are super excited for the upcoming release of Magic the Gathering's newest set, Commander Legends 2, Kaldheim. The set looks awesome, but I do have one small criticism. Wizards of the Coast marketing seems to have packaged these awesome new Commander cards in this ancient thing called a, a booster pack, which were designed for something my grandfather tells me was called draft and standard. These were how people in the olden times, back when you could meet face to face and instead of just via Skype, would play Magic the Gathering. Oh, Grandpa, you and your stories. He also told me that Standard needed four copies of a card instead of just one. Sure, Gramps. Yes, Kaldheim looks amazing, but the truth is that you only need one copy of a card for Commander, not a playset, so you don't need to buy booster boxes or crack pack after pack to build a collection. You just need to determine the cards that you want and then, say it with me now, buy singles at your local game store. You remember local game stores, right? They were that place next to the pot dispensary where you used to play Magic every Friday. Well now, you don't need to buy booster boxes of Kaldheim, just the singles you need. This video will go over what I feel are the best new cards for Commander from Kaldheim. And not just talking about the cool new Commanders, though there are many, many to choose from, but rather an emphasis on cards that you'd want to pick up as singles to run in the 99 of your decks. That's right, don't buy Kaldheim, just buy these singles instead. I'd like to begin with an honorable mention, or perhaps an obvious mention. Several, in fact, because if we're talking about picking up singles for commander decks, then there can be no question that all eyes should be on the fact that the modal dual land cycle is now complete. We already know how good these cards are for commander, and Kaldheim finishes the set with back channel pathway for Simic, Henge Gate pathway for Azurius, Blight Step pathway for Rakdos, and Dark Boar pathway for Golgari. These lands will round out the six we got in Zendikar Rising, and so we now have one for each color pair. This is a great opportunity for budget players and for newer players to Magic who might not have a wealth of multicolor lands to fall back on. They provide great fixing while not propping up decks with too greedy a mana base, and I cannot recommend them enough. And that's not all though, because Kaldheim also has Snowlands. I want to mention this here simply because it is going to even further drive down the cost of picking up no basics. Obviously, we've had these for a long time, but not too long ago, if you wanted to, say, make every mountain in your Felden EDH deck into a snow mountain just to use the extra planner lens trick, well, that was, to say the least, a bit of a costly endeavor. But now you can snow basic out the mana base of your commander deck, and it's more affordable with each new printing such as this of snow basics. In addition to that extra planner lens trick, more and more snow matters cards like Nefari, Betrayer King or Gorn God of Winter continue to make many Magic the Gathering players of this and honestly most formats ask the question, why aren't you just running Snow Basics instead of Basics in everything? And in terms of Snowlands, there's also the non-basic flavors of Arctic Treeline, Glacial Floodplain, Alpine Meadow, Highland Forest, Ice Tunnel, Rhymewood Falls, Snowfield Sinkhole, Sulfurous Mine, Volatile Fjord, and Woodland Castle. Chasm, would you look at that? Wizards finished an entire cycle in the same set. Progress. What makes these lands so attractive is that they are fetchable by anything that mentions these card types. Whether that's an actual fetch land or just a Crocin Verge, or even Knight of the White Orchid, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that these are at common, highly affordable, great budget includes, or just includes altogether. So yes, looking to just buy singles for your commander decks, then start with the obvious mentions here of lands from Kaldheim. But what about our actual list of picks? Coming in at number five is the best white card for Commander from all of Kaldheim. Not only is this life gain, but a beautiful white synergy with life gain that goes into drawing cards, which is exactly what you want to do in Commander, and especially in white. Brilliant, beautiful white design in Cosmos Elixir. And it's our number, what's that? It's not a white card? What color is it? Colorless. 
So it just goes in, in just about every deck. That's just what Commander needs. <laughs> All right then. Cosmos Elixir is an artifact, not a white card, for four generic. At the beginning of your end step, draw a card if your life total is greater than your starting life total. Otherwise, you gain two life. I swear, I don't mean to beat this into the ground, but this really should have just been white. What I love about the card, though, is that it kind of can go in just about every deck. It's not like a must-run level, such as Soul Ring, or the myriad other mana rocks that more and more make up the composition of just about every deck out there. I can see many decks choosing not to run this, but it's a great way to add a little extra oomph to just about any deck that could use it. I've been playtesting this in a lot of my lower end power decks and finding that it really does help when it hits the board to give you that little extra get up and go. This is likely going to become one of those sleeper cards that a lot of people overlook at first until they end up having it played opposite them, and then they realize its true potential. When I first saw but I thought it would be a lot higher on my list, but there's actually a lot for Commander in Call Time. Coming in at number four is a great answer to opponents who are ready to take anything Simic and destroy it on sight. This slippery serpent is the perfect power for flying under the radar and then getting out of control fast. Excellent in the 99, or I suppose as a sneaky, snaky commander to try and offer your Simic deck cloud cover, it's Coma, Cosmos Serpent. Coma uh, Cosmos Serpent is three generic, double green, and double blue. Expensive, but you get a legendary 6-6 six, six Serpent that can't be countered. At the beginning of each upkeep, you create a 3-3 three, three blue Serpent creature token. You can sacrifice another Serpent and then choose one. Tap a target permanent, and its activated abilities can't be activated this turn. Or just give Coma indestructible until end of turn. So yes, it does have a hefty seven mana casting cost, but it does so much. And I feel that this new card, whether as a Commander or one of the 99 is helping breathe some new life into Simic. While Eryxmethes is the de facto sea-themed commander for most people, Coma provides a new avenue and new deck building space. Or use Coma for the classic trick of putting your deck's real Simic powerhouse commander, be it Tatoyova or Kinnan or Edric in the 99, with Coma serving as the less alarm-raising but still very powerful headliner. Either way, for those in Simic, this is a great pickup. Coming in at number three is something spicy for all you Boros... What's that say? Stands? Boros stands? <laughs> that must mean Boros fans. Well, it's a card as cool as I am, perhaps even more so. And that card is Cole the Forge Master. Cole the Forge Master is one red and one white for a 2-2 two -two dwarf warrior. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, if it was enchanted or equipped, return it to its owner's hand. It also has a second line of text about creature tokens you control getting plus one plus one if they are enchanted or equipped. But honestly, that feels like a safety valve for Skull Clamp if we're being really honest. There are many, many ways to infinite combo with coal. And they involve having a zero cost creature or a way to pay for a creature like Ashnaut's Altar and an equipment you can equip for free. You'll be able to loop around with ease and with Boros having access to both Imperial Recruiter and Recruiter of the Guard, it won't be a stretch to go and grab whatever creature you need. Old favorites, Stoneforge Mystic and Steel Shaper's Gift are joined by Search for Glory and Axe Guard Armory, so finding equipment is a cinch too. The biggest thing going against Cole is not having card draw to hit those combos, but red is at least getting more and more new draw every day. Slap Jessica's will and some other stuff in the deck, and you're sure to have a great time. Boast seems like a fun mechanic. It's kind of like Raid, though, right? Maybe all abilities are secretly kicker in disguise. So what do we got? We got Making Tokens? Check. Uh, we got Impulse Draw? Check. Vampiric Tutor? Uh, what? Vampiric Tutor, repeatable, on a body, without paying life, and all you have to do is attack? It's more likely than you'd think, and it's the number two best card from Kaldheim for Commander. Varagoth, Blood Sky Sire, is a 2-3 Death Touch Demon for two and one black. It has Boast for one and a black. Target player tutors a card to the top of their library. If you'd surveyed me before I saw this and asked me what effects I'd expect on Boast, I wouldn't have said Vampiric Tutor. This is amazing. Yeah, Varagoth is balanced, and in case you can't tell from that tone, I'm saying it with tongue firmly in cheek by the fact that should your opponent choose to block, it's probably gonna die. The thing is, 
is, though, this is Commander. And there are so many, many ways to help this thing get in for damage. From classic equipment like Whisper Silk Cloak and Trailblazer's Boots, lands like Rogue's Passage, and spells like Supernatural Stamina and Grim Return, you're going to find a way to connect with Varagoth and keep him around. Drawing the card before your upkeep shouldn't be too hard in black either. With card draw on demand on plenty of permanents, plus ways to sacrifice creatures to draw cards, you shouldn't find it too difficult to get what you need. Slot him into Yuriko, the Tiger's Shadow. Trigger boast after declaring attacks, tutor the biggest spell you have to the top of the deck, and then ninjutsu a different creature back in for the damage step, putting Varagoth safely back into hand. So good. All right, so what do I think is the number one pickup for Commander from Kaldheim? As always, this was a close tie with number two. I could see some people arguing maybe this should have been number two, number two should have been one, but either way, this next card is powerful and yeah, it's it's blue. But there's a lot of good blue cards. I, I, I mean, in general, there's a lot of bl good blue cards. It's, it's also true in Kaldheim, there's a lot of good blue. Blue is just a really strong color, but I feel that if you're looking to not buy Kaldheim packs and just pick up a single for your blue, Blue deck, Mystic Reflection, is my number one choice. For one and one blue mana, Mystic Reflection is an instant. Choose target non-legendary creature. The next time one or more creatures or planeswalkers enter the battlefield this turn, they enter as copies of the chosen creature. What's more, you can use the foretell mechanic to put this card in exile until you want to cast it for a single blue. This is a very powerful spell, and I just want to illustrate how powerful that is with one example. Say you have Mystic Reflection in your hand and nine lands. Cast an Avenger of Zendikar. You play a land. In response to the landfall trigger that would make plants, you hold priority and cast Mystic Reflection. Instead of nine plants, you get nine Avengers of Zendikar. You can also use this to stifle an opponent's big play. Say an opponent casts a Dockside Extortionist. While it's on the stack, you can instead choose a Mana Dork on the board and poof, no more treasure for the opponent. Still, I guess letting it resolve and then casting your own creature and turning that into a Dockside Extortionist is also a good play. Can you imagine having an Avenger of Zendikar already in play, playing a land and making a bunch of Dockside Extortionists? An embarrassment of riches. And the possibilities go on and on. Mystic Reflection is probably the strongest card in the set when you consider high levels of play, and I can see it making a mark on all levels of Commander. It's sometimes a clone effect and sometimes a way to stop an opponent's big play. It's flexible, and by God is it cheap. One mana with Fortel? This is right up there with Swan Song. I hope very much this video has you hyped up for Kaldheim. I know I'm so excited to get on down to my local game store or call them up over the phone and order for curbside pickup responsibly the singles that I talked about in this video today, but I want to hear from you. Are there singles in Kaldheim you intend to pick up for Commander? Well, what are they and what decks are they going to go in? I really want to know. And if you did find the video helpful, you can help me out by remembering to subscribe, leaving that message, especially Especially, especially by sharing with a friend or on social media, or just clicking the like button. Go on, just click it, do that, do that, do that thing. And you'll be helping the channel out when you do.